Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to go over another common Linux privilege escalation technique, which is going to be cracking the hashes that get stored in the Etsy shadow file on Linux systems. Now, in case you don't know, the Etsy shadow file is where all of the different password hashes for each user are stored. So if we take a look at the Etsy shadow file, for example, we can see the conda user here. This second field right here is an actual hash of that user's password. Now, if we scroll up, we can also see that the root user has a password set and this is the actual hash for the password to log in as the root user. So if we are able to somehow crack these hashes, we can gain access as these users. An important thing to note is that by default, the uh, Etsy shadow directory is not world readable. Only the root user will be able to view the Etsy shadow file. In order for you to be able to view this file, you would already have to have some sort of misconfiguration in place that would allow you to view it. Another common way that you'd gain access to the Etsy shadow file without already having root is if you find a backup of the system and are able to access that backup file and pull the Etsy shadow file from there. So moving on, we're going to assume that you already have access to the Etsy password file and the Etsy shadow file. If you haven't seen the Etsy password file, it basically just stores a lot of different information about each user on the system. For example, their username, uh, their user ID, group ID, home directory, and shell. Now, typically the Etsy password file is readable by everybody. So that's something that's not too hard to come across if you already have a shell on a machine. Now, the only tool that we're going to need for this is a tool called John. John is a tool that comes installed by default on most Kali systems. Um, so we're going to assume that you already have access to the Etsy password file and the Etsy shadow file. We're going to create a local copy of those files just in case something goes wrong. We don't want to mess up and corrupt the system. So we're just going to copy Etsy password into, we'll call it password.txt. And we're going to do the same thing for the Etsy shadow file. So we're going to copy Etsy shadow into shadow.txt. Now, John can't read these formats by default. So what we need to do is use a tool called unshadow. The syntax of this is going to be uh, unshadow. And then we're going to do password.txt and shadow.txt. And basically it's going to transform this into a format that John can understand. And we're just going to output this into a file. We'll just call it John input. All right, we'll run that. Perfect. Now, if we can um, John input, we can see that basically what it's done is combined the password and shadow file. So we can see the username and then the hash and then everything else within it. So now what we can go ahead and do is run John on this John input file that we've created from the unshadow. The syntax for this is just going to be John, and then we're going to pass it the file that we just created. Now, another thing that you can do with John is specify a word list. We can do that by using the dash dash word list flag. So we'll, see, we'll say word list is equal to, uh, and the word list that we're going to use is the rock U word list. This is a very standard uh, word list used for password cracking. It's something that will be mostly the standard if you're doing things like hack the box or most CTF challenges, unless you need a custom word list. Um, mostly all those passwords can be found on the rock U list. So, and that's actually comes default on a Kali instance. It's going to be under user share uh, word lists and then rock U.txt. Now, the reason that we're doing this basically we can't just crack the password, right? Because a hash is not reversible. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna take every line of a password that's in this rocku.txt file, which are sample files, and it's going to hash them in the same uh, encryption method that's used to store the files that are in the Etsy password directory. I'm sorry, in the Etsy shadow directory. So after it does this, it's gonna compare those two hashes together. And if they match, it knows that the password from the rocku list that it just tried is going to be the same password that is the user's password. So we'll go ahead and run this command. Now I've already ran it to cut down on the time. It didn't take very long. I had a weak password set on it, but you can see that it loads the two password hashes. It tells us there's no passwords left to crack because it's already gone through that process, but we can view the results by just typing in John dash dash show. And then the file that we created and perfect, it puts it right here. So the syntax of this is going to be username and then password. So we can see the root user's password was Tor and the conda user password was password123. Now that you have these passwords, you can go ahead and access the file system in any way that you normally would. 
And that's about it for this video. It's something that's not too complicated. As long as you have access to the Etsy password and Etsy shadow file, you should be able to combine them with the unshadow command and then run John against it with various word lists in order to crack those hashes.